actually, I thought about that. Um, I was going to find an apartment, but, and I thought staying here when they can come and visit, you know, could be something, you know, that would be good for them. And there's a pool. And even though there's no one at the pool, I'm like, yeah, they always ask me to go to a hotel. So just stay here. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Kids love a hotel. I mean, it's exotic. <laughs> I, I don't know why, you know, I, I told my daughter, I go, yeah, I was like, what did I say? I said something about an apartment, you know, uh-huh. sorry about that. I said something right. about an apartment. I said, uh, uh, Karen, yeah, it's like an apartment. She goes, what's an apartment? And I go, <laughs> it's like a hotel, but it just doesn't have a hotel name on it. Right. So, yeah. Right. It's like, you know, it's like a hotel, except you don't get any of the amenities and it, it so yeah it's probably not as cool so and people stay longer yeah (laughs) right right uh all right looks like we're streaming so let's uh let's get started here officially all right hello out there and welcome to this loon dive on sound of the loons i'm steve mcpherson and i am thrilled to be welcoming the newest member of minnesota united today kai kamara you're still the newest member right we haven't signed anybody else I, i i hope so okay good i'll keep that (laughs) (laughs) i'll keep that I was yeah. just talking to Adrian uh, uh, Zendayas. I was like, wait, when did you come in? He's like, I think I came in five days before you. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah. No, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, funny thing is I have um, followed one or two of the podcasts before, you know, and seen some guys on it. I always want to see what guys are saying, you know, so now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's excellent. So if, if uh, people out there, if you're watching this and you have a question for Kai, uh, just pop it down wherever they let you type comments. Uh, this is across a couple of different platforms. So I'm sure you can figure out, maybe we'll be able to get to some of those at the end. Uh, mostly I'm, I'm just excited to let sort of uh, fans get to know Kai, uh, find out a little bit more about, you know, what he's about. Um, so I'll just start asking, you know, how has Minnesota been so far? I know that this is a sort of an odd time. And also you, you're going out to play games every three or four days, it feels <laughs> like. So I'm sure you haven't gotten a lot of time to explore, but just, you know, what have you been, what have been your first impressions? Uh, right now, it's actually beautiful because just seeing the change, the changes and the tree colors, I'm like, man, this is awesome. You know, I love seasons, you know, I'm born and raised in Sierra Leone and people are always, why are you always in a cold, you know, state? And I go, I love it. I love to have, you know, winter, fall, spring, like all that, like to have those different kind of seasons. So driving around now, I'm like, man, it's so beautiful just to see all this. But um, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it so far. I haven't been able to explore as much. Um, again, trying to stay indoors you know, um, but it's, it's been good. Um, so if that's one of the things that I can enjoy about this city, the trees and changing leaves colors. So right now I like that. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, these are the days I was saying that to somebody, some of my neighbors, you know, we have sort of like our little pod of people that we, that we see and we have neighbors uh-huh. and they came over to sit outside, which we still all sit outside, but had a fire. It was like a perfectly blue sky. And I was like, this is it. There's not that many of them, but this is one of those days. And so to be right. here for these days, that's it's 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 showing Minnesota at its best because it does it does get kind of cold later on. I'll let you know right now. But everybody says that, you know, it's like, but I think I'm I think I was I've been bred for it, you know, really to play in Columbus my first couple of years and move in, you know, I lived in Boston too. Boston's not warm. Sure. You know, Kansas is not warm. And uh, Colorado, I mean, yes, it's it snows a lot, but you kind of get the the sun a lot. Um, but I think it'll be all right. But maybe right when after what December eight, after the finals, and then I can just pack up my bag and go back to Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't think a ton of you know some guys stay around in the off season, but not very money. And I would not blame anyone for just get. get <laughs> I mean, I try to get out of here if I can, and that's that's off. the one thing I asked the guys because I was like, hey, what do what, what should I live? What should I live? And everybody. I haven't been in an apartment in, I don't know, five, six years or so. And everybody's like, yeah, you know, like apartments, apartments. I was like, does anybody own a house? And everybody's like, I don't want to shovel snow. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. This is one of the rude awakenings of home ownership as someone who lived in apartments. And then I moved into a house that had a driveway and I was like, I didn't have a snowblower the first year and I'm just out there just shoveling. <laughs> and it's, so you recommend a snowblower? I recommend if you go with a house, I recommend a snowblower. Um, okay. It's definitely definitely necessary. I have a nice battery powered unit. I can't remember the brand, but uh, 
but hit me up if you get that house and I can give you the brand for that. So. Awesome. <laughs> Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, just sort of growing up in Sierra, Sierra Leone and, you know, getting into soccer and then your journey coming to America. That's a broad topic. I understand. But. Sounds, sounds like the movie when you say coming to America. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a second one coming out, actually. Well, that's right. <laughs> maybe I missed out on that one, but, you know, inspiring actor coming up, please. Eddie Murphy, don't forget I'm here, you know, uh, oh, hit me up. No, man, it was, it was a blessing really to to have this transition, you know. I remember again speaking to someone and just say, been playing professionally for, you know, 15 years now. But just when I think back to Sierra Leone and growing up there and, you know, growing up in the Civil War, it's never anything, I, you know, I wish on any like young person or anyone in general. But for us being young and missing so much school and all those times, you know, it was difficult, really difficult. But you don't see it. I don't see it as much as I see it now when I see conflicts in other countries and conflicts that's happening when you see the youth, the kids that have no knowledge and no idea of what's going on and being affected. So that's that's what, you know, it was for us, you know, growing up. We got blessed and moved to the U.S. at the age of 16 through a refugee program because then my mom had been in the U.S. So there's, you know, you can file for your family members, you know, war country so we got awarded the refugee program i came here i was 16 in 2000 october it's coming up um yeah it was like october 26 is when we landed in the u.s and i remember landing in, in new york it was cold i was like what is this <laughs> you know that's the first time because you're coming from from africa where it's never been over uh, uh, under i don't know maybe 65 might even be pushing it in west africa you know so and then finally it was like it was cold as October, uh, but it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing, and I moved to LA and joined my mom. And <clears throat> finally, I was like, "All right, stay out of trouble. Best way to do that, play play soccer. You know, I'll play sports because I didn't. Soccer is not my favorite sport. You know, if you really think it is, it's not. Volleyball is. <laughs> oh, nice. So I started playing volleyball in high school and did cross country, and then soccer came about, and I was like, "All right, now play soccer." yeah yeah vo volleyball feeds into the your height as well i'm sure that's a, a real asset and i yeah that's that's what helped me with the jump with the jump in <laughs> so yeah no i i connect with people that play volleyball so much more like because then again yes you're a soccer player you know everybody wants to speak soccer speak soccer but to me it's like just being an, a, a one sport athlete great you know you put a lot of uh time into it but when you can be an all-around athlete that means Again, there's a lot more you have to do with coordination, your brains and all this. Like there's so much going on around it. And you're able to brand, you know, brand yourself a little bit different. So mine is not just being in this one demographic of just soccer people and speaking to them, you know, and moreover when it comes to like, you know, like uh say younger, younger girls or teenage girls, more of them, you know, that played volleyball, then it's not just talking soccer, but I can speak volleyball with some people. And so it's just when I go, yeah, I play volleyball. They're like, what? You play volleyball? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so do you think that that, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a thing now in youth sports that, you know, kids are getting, you know, sort of committed to individual sports younger and younger. And they're sort of going down this pipeline of just sort of, you know, you start playing soccer at the age of eight and that's what you do. Do you feel like there was, you, you got a lot of benefit out of having multi-sport experience and bringing things from volleyball to soccer and you yeah. know, sort of doing more than just being a soccer player? 100%, 100%. I 100% feels that I was uh, coming from training just now, a, a youth um, from Colorado uh, called me and he was like, you know, I was like, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to watch you play much to give you some tips. He's like, yeah, well, I just want to talk to you about my endurance. I need to work on my endurance and, you know, my finishing. I go, well, endurance, one thing I can tell you, like I ran cross country when I played. You know, and that just keeps me going more. Even till this day, I love running. Like when quarantine started, all I was doing was just doing this, you know, 100 mile challenge and stuff like that. I say to me, that works more in my endurance and stuff like that. So when I ran cross country, I loved that. I enjoyed it, you know, and I brought that into soccer. I feel like when I'm on the soccer field, I'm never going to get tired. Mm. That's just how I see myself. And then for sure, my timing in volleyball, um, you know, again, to connect with the ball up in the air did help me with my timing and jumping and headers and stuff like that. So 
they they really you know and that's the thing about americans you know people everybody growing up here play baseball basketball and some of the american goalkeepers have been very good because of the hand-eye coordination it's different you know when we were at training some days having fun and playing handball mm -hmm. and you can see the foreign players you can see the foreign players uh not you know the hand-eye coordination is so much different sure. than saying you know us that grew up in america because you play baseball or you play you know basketball so hand-eye coordination is so much better yeah right. so it does help yeah yeah so uh running wise when when you when you're out there running do you uh do you listen to music when you're running or are you a purist so you don't listen to music Listen to music, listen okay. to music. Yeah, they say it's a bit different because they say when you run a marathon, you're not listening to music, <laughs> but I listen to music. Um, one of my, I always listen to obviously African music as I'm running, but one of my favorite runs I did once, and uh, I just actually just Google, not Google on, on Spotify and just said like hard metal. And that's what <laughs> I had. And I'm telling you, I'm just going because I don't know no lyrics, no nothing. It's just so i'm just like running whenever i'm like hearing this i'm like <sighs> like it just gets you going you know? <laughs> so i always like remember that that was one of my favorite like runs that i've been on and because it was something i didn't have to sing along as i was going to think about the lyrics it was just like <laughs> and that was like really pumping me up <laughs> There's there's a real sweet spot, I feel like, in terms of exercise music between sort of newness and familiarity. And if you're too familiar with it, it doesn't sort of get you as hype. If it's too yeah. new, you might not. But if it's sort of at that point of like, this is exciting, mm -hmm. then you just get excited by the music. Mm -hmm. So for sure. It's, it's good. I think music, I mean, nowadays, even just being in the stadium and not having fans and when they put that fan noise on, it's like always we're like, what would it be like if they were playing music and the speakers while we're playing games? You know? <laughs> so, know, so that's what that fan noise is right now, to be honest. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, music, music, it's that international soccer being an international sport. Music is that international thing that will get anybody going. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to come back to music just a little bit later. I did want to start. Uh, I did want to touch on. Um, First of all, you've used your platform already a couple of times to express your feelings about voting and how important that is. I just wanted to give you another opportunity to make that case because I think it's important as well. Yes, 100%. You know, again, I, I, I myself, as I've moved here to the U.S. when I was 16 years old, I didn't know much about anything that was going on. I was just a happy kid, just wanting to be in America and really enjoy being in America because I still believe America has been, you know, the best country in the world opportunities that's what it is here it's like anyone has the benefits and the opportunity to become whatever you want to be you know and that's the same things i want to you know be able to dream about for my kids and you know other people's kids you know to for us to be in this oneness of you know no discrimination and stuff like this people have fought for this before you know again i'm a I'm a, a Muslim refugee immigrant into the U.S. Now I'm a now I'm a U.S. citizen. People had to fight for that before to make sure that, you know, I get to enjoy what I'm enjoying today. So and nowadays, if my platform is even going to affect, uh, you know, one person, five person or whatever it is, I'm going to always speak on it. And so that's why I voted. I had never voted been a citizen for as long as I've been a citizen. You know, two elections obviously have gone by. But because I didn't understand the power of it as much as I understand what it is now. And I say thanks to not just black people, but people of all races, because they've educated me through these times to see that everybody see our struggles. And I see that power in the rest of the people. And then I say, oh, wow, this is so powerful because it's not just me standing up for me now, but other people are standing up to say, no, I'm with you. And again, if we believe that, our voices needs to be heard. Voting is definitely one of the, the most important ways to make sure, you know, our voices are heard. And it doesn't matter what side you're on, but it's making sure that you take the opportunity to, you know, to vote. And that's, again, I'm, I'm away now from Colorado where I was registered, but, you know, I can't wait for my mail to come in so I can cast my vote. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I delivered my, my mail in ballot in person. You can turn them in in person in Minnesota. Good. So, so I did that last week, brought my daughter along. Uh, it was fantastic. So uh, yeah. it's absolutely civic duty. And I think it's something that everybody should be doing out there. So, yeah. 
Um, let's uh, also talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the Heart Shaped Hands Foundation and and giving back to Sierra Leone and, and sort of your path to starting that foundation and then what you're trying to accomplish with it. Yes, it's 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 amazing. It's awesome. I mean, it's Heart Shaped Hands. Um, I uh, started doing the Heart Shaped Hands celebrations a little while ago. And now I see all those other players are copying my celebrations. I see you. Yeah, it's all right. Um, and, uh, you know, being in, in Kansas City, uh, there was some really family oriented uh, um, team that was around us. And it really pushed me into because actually I had hardship hands. I had that foundation before, but I didn't register it until 2012 when they're like you should register it you know it's not just sending your own money to Sierra Leone all the time to help these kids so Hardship Hands Foundation then was launched and registered 501c3 in 2012 and what I you know my goal was to to provide scholarships for kids and give them hopes in Sierra Leone as you know you can pay for school and give them school supplies and all these things and nowadays the government has implemented a free education so Hardship Hands is even dreaming of something you know bigger into sports and school at the same time because we don't have that in Sierra Leone so that's one of the things that we're you know we're looking forward to doing what we've done recently was collecting sports drive which you know was collected everywhere in Colorado um, um, in Los Angeles and all these places and I can't wait like I collected somebody called me the other day they gave me 17 surfboards and they're like what do you need a surfboard in Sierra Leone for I go Look at Bure Surf Club. This is the kids in Bure Beach in Sierra Leone because we mm -hmm. we're Sierra Leone is on the beach. Right. And Bure Surf Club, like these kids are there. They're, you know, 10 years old, eight years old. They're surfing, but there's only like three boards. So I can't wait. So now Hardship Hands is taking some of these gifts that we've gotten from people, taking it back to Sierra Leone and giving it to them. So Hardship Hands just, you know, hopefully, you know, there's more bigger things that we're working on. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to collaborate with more people. Yeah, that's amazing. I, what, what's the what's the shipping cost like on 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 that many surfboards? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, the contain, the, our forty foot container will be loaded in in Los Angeles this weekend, nice. and uh, it's not too bad. I mean, the shipping of the container itself will be, I think, it's six thousand from Sierra from Los Angeles to Sierra Leone, six thousand dollars. Right. But then also you have to pay another couple grand for clearance when they get to Sierra Leone. Sure, but. The contents inside of it, that's what's priceless. Nice, nice. And is it right that you did some work with um, uh, LEAD, uh, Monrovia Football Academy, I think, um, which, which <laughs> Minnesota United worked with last year and brought over the, a girls team to play uh, here in Minnesota, which was awesome. I watched the videos. I watched the videos. I saw Darwin, you know, putting on some dancing skills with some of yeah. the, the girls from Liberia. And, uh, you know, those things makes me smile because, you know, those are the things that I'm really passionate about you know, giving people opportunities and lead. I'd speak to Will Smith, um, who's uh, the founder of lead. And uh, just to kind of get an idea because of the direction the hardship ends is going and, mit and build a partnership or, you know, with them uh, because Liberia is just next door to Sierra Leone. And mm -hmm. I was really amazed that the fact that Minnesota United even <laughs> was part of that because um, uh, Minnesota being the most populated Liberian community in America. Right. And I just felt I was like, that was a no brainer. Like that was awesome. And the fact that they were part of that to help those girls come from Sierra Leone and come in here and target, like they took the kids to target and then they, they, <laughs> yeah. they shop it. I can just like, I seriously, I was sitting there. I was like, I can, I feel what the girls were feeling. Cause I know what it's like, you know? Right. So that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's obviously that's an experience you must have had, uh, you know, at being 16 and coming over here. So no, I can just see like I watched the video and these girls were like, you know, I target and they were like getting to pick what they want. And obviously you're coming from Africa and then you get to be, you know, taken to a place like that and just say, OK, go ahead, take what you want. And it's like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Um, yeah. All right, I got I got a hard question for you. You ready? Ooh, yeah. You played you played for Columbus, San Jose, Houston. Houston is Houston right? Yeah, I think Kansas so, yeah. City, New England, Vancouver, Colorado. Now it's Minnesota. Where is the best food so far? Oh, it's the Midwest, man. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be. Um, shout out to Oklahoma Joe's. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no. Kansas City. Everywhere it's been it's been different, but barbecue in Kansas City, I'm, you know, it's 
anybody else is watching from anywhere else that you're from, I'm sorry, but the, the barbecue in Kansas City was, it was really good. I like that question because no one really asked you what's your favorite city, but the best food, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, the Kansas City, so I've been down there a couple of times with the team and I picked Ike's brain for what was, you know, where to go. So um, so the, the first time I did like a little tour that was the the, the team had put on with some, some uh, partners. And so we went to uh, Arthur Bryant's, we went to Gates, um second time i recommended q39 and that was q39 was was terrific yeah it's a yeah yeah q39 is really good actually i had it for the first time this maybe two years ago when i went back okay. but oklahoma joe's barbecue the place i mean just so unique being inside of a gas station and i i lived right i live right next door to it so after trading i just call in put my you know chicken z-man order and that's the thing uh -huh. people don't know the chicken z-man it's not on the menu Oh. but you can put the order in. Okay. <laughs> so I put the chicken Z-Man order, pick it up, get back to the house and just, you know, <laughs> just eat. Is it dangerous to live next to a, a barbecue spot? It seems like it could be. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's if you have a nutritionist on the team, you know? Sure. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to move you. <laughs> oh, that's great. No, but when the food is good, you know, again, it's, it's uh the cities are good when you are in a place like that and you know they have good food it's great because like you said yourself you can visit you know friends and family can come over and have something different you know yeah. something like you know speaking to marlin and knowing he's from mississippi i'm like i've never been to around those areas but i love the culture of what i've heard and stuff and so i'd love to go there one day i'm sure the food is different over there yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's close out. I got a couple of fan questions to ask you here um, that people on Twitter hit up. Uh, uh, Gabrielle, good. Wanted, Gabrielle wanted to know uh, what I think she asked, what were the worst goal celebrations on the team? But there haven't been that many goals overall since you got here. So I'll just say worst goal celebrations you've seen just in your time. I'm going to call back to last year, Ethan Finlay, uh, your former and current teammate went with the knee slide into the, the, the flag and he biffed it and just fell on his face. So that was one of the worst that I've seen, but what's, what's a really terrible goal celebration you've seen? It's not, it's not the, it's not the worst. Cause I've done those a few times. <laughs> I've, uh, I've missed the knee slide. Um, I don't think there's a worst goal celebration. I'm going to be honest. Okay. Because yeah, I'm sure coating it. Scoring a goal is not easy. All right. So when you score a goal, even if it's the fist pump or the jump or the Alan share, just a little, you know, one finger up, it's still a, it's still a celebration. At least you're doing something. Yeah. Somebody called it and goes, man, you scored a goal, um, your first goal from Minnesota, and you didn't do your dance. You didn't do, you know, like crazy things that you do. Why? I was like, uh, it's just a penalty. <laughs> you know, I was like, but I still, <laughs> I still did the hardship hands. You know, that's the, but I haven't, I haven't seen horse goal celebration. Okay. I think the, actually the funniest story I heard about it was from uh, Boxy last year, because obviously as a defender, he doesn't score a lot of goals and uh -huh. he scored a goal and then he didn't know what to do. Like he didn't, you know, cause a lot of, a lot of forwards will have the, the plan, right. You know, they have those like a signature, you've got the heart shaped hands and everything like that. Uh -huh. He didn't know what to do. So he just starts running down the sideline and he's like, I'm going to go run and celebrate with those guys. Then he realized it was the other team like warming up on the touchline. So he's like, no, I'm not going to do it with those guys. So that's awesome that's yes. awesome yes boxy has like, no plan so <laughs> boxy now we need to get boxy to score more more goals he's a big man i told him he's a big man this his head's got to be a magnet you know absolutely he's got to head those balls in there so boxy there we go this <laughs> next game you score a goal we're celebrating together there you go plan it out all right last question i have for you uh ryan wanted to know if you could recommend some uh sierra leonean and or afrobeat artists to check out Ooh, music huh yeah just uh just follow me ryan i'm always you know live on the music man um one of my favorite sierra leone guy right now his name is dreezy leak dreezy leak um i'll actually tweet tweet him after this and some of the people can see it cool dreezy leak is an upcoming artist in sierra leone has actually made some appearances just before the covid uh, with bbc in england so you know he speaks really well young man under 25 and he's you know he's changing the look of music inside of Sierra Leone I like that very positive you know there's nothing bad in the music that he does and obviously those are the things that we want to see um so yes and just in general I mean Afrobeats I guess any Afrobeats that you want to listen to it's great but yeah Drizzy Leak from Sierra Leone <laughs> 
every every other serial and artist will probably text me. Yeah, he's bad, but... <laughs> you, have to, you have to follow up on Twitter and let everyone know. I'm a huge yeah. Fela Cudi fan when it comes to Afrobeat. I'm a, I'm a traditionalist, so he's from it's good. It's, and it's great to see how music again. It, you know, it's it's so different now, and the beats is about everything now. It's not really a what you're saying, but that beats just kind of gets you, makes you feel like you're on vacation, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> It's great. Like, when I was in college, there was a class on high life and that was, it was high life music was, was it was all Afrobeat stuff. And I feel like there you high go. Life there you really go. expresses that. So <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Now, yeah. Music, food, wait, we hit music, we hit food, we hit soccer. I mean, we did it all, all the, all the good stuff, you know, humanitarian work. It's yeah, it's great. So <laughs> that one, that one's just a little cherry. It's, we shouldn't get credit for that. You know, yeah. that's just part of life. Do it for other. Do it for others. So yes, yes. All right, Kai. Thanks so much uh, for joining us on this loon dive, and uh, we will we will catch you later. All right, people. Our chip hands. I'm out. Wait, I'm still staying.